What do you think about scientific theory? Are they just abstract, unrealistic thoughts nurtured by scientists sitting in isolated laboratories and contributing nothing valuable to our life? Recently, there has been an anti-intellectualism trend rising all over the world. There are many who disagree with Darwin's evolution theory, calling it just a theory. And those who believe in it are no different from those who believe in the Bible. The difference lies in their choice. I choose to believe in God. You choose to believe in natural selection. And there are groups of people protesting about climate change. They believe that it is just a conspiracy propped up by evil scientists to keep attracting funding. Or now, in order to treat cancer, people use oriental medicine, Chinese medicine, functional foods, superfoods, and praying instead of going to the doctor because medicine can never find the treatment for cancer. The stronger movements include anti-vaccination and anti-GMO. There are also groups of people who believe that the earth is flat. But how can we be sure that we can rely on science? We do not have to search for it. The evidence of the reliability of science lies right inside our pocket. Do you trust science? Just take out a smartphone, turn it on, hold it, observe it, and feel it. The Gorilla Glass on the front is a durable piece of kit, resistant to scratches and shocks, like when you drop it. That's the fruit of material science and the science of chemistry. You may have to put a screen protector on it. A lot of research in chemistry was carried out to create that protector, not just in the plastic, but in the glue. Now when you press the power button, the screen lights up. There are already electrons flowing from the battery, which was created thanks to scientific research in electrochemistry. The electrons flow through the circuits, and it can be done so thanks to the discovery of electricity. And in the computer chips, quantum theory. The phone's little LEDs below the screen can light up thanks to quantum science in semiconductors and liquid crystals flip and bend the polarized light to produce a matrix of colored light. Now, let's swipe to unlock it. Capacitance changes in the layers on the display caused by your fingers are decoded by the computer chips as a swipe movement. Or maybe you have a fingerprint detector that reads your fingerprint. Again, it's probably capacitive and also decoded by the computer chips made possible by advances in quantum physics. The algorithms that find the swipe or read the fingerprint belong to computer science, by the way. Let's turn on the Maps app. This action alone requires several complicated calculations for the application to display your location accurately. First, an electromagnetic signal is received through the phone's antenna. There are at least four of them hidden in your phones. This is applied electromagnetism. The signal contains the position and timestamp of a GPS satellite high up in space. This is possible thanks to the theory of information and orbital mechanics. But up there, the satellite is rather fast and the gravity is slightly lower. So time flows differently. The atomic clock on the satellite has to be adjusted using the theory of relativity or your position would drift 10 kilometers a day. The engineers have to program the four satellites to process a whole bunch of advanced math equations to transform those positions and timestamps from four different satellites and triangulate your position. Then, when the phone knows your position, it uses the Wi-Fi 4G LTE antenna to send you a request to a data center for the map data on that position, which is in turn sent to you. But at the same time, millions of signals from other phones are also being sent to the data center. So how does the machine at the center know which signal is from your phone? In order for you to make that request and get the response without anyone listening in and not getting mixed up with other signals, engineers have to apply cryptography to encrypt all the messages. How long does it take the smartphone to carry out all those processes? Two minutes? Or 30 seconds? What is so remarkable about the smartphone? The remarkable thing about all these is not the fact that there are so many scientific theories required to produce the device. All mathematical equations and theory involved are based on a foundation set hundreds of years ago. What if the foundation is wrong? 
If the theory about electromagnetism is wrong, just by a number, your phone cannot work as it is supposed to. If the algorithm is wrong, or the quantum theory is wrong, then you cannot open your phone. If the faraway satellite sends the wrong signal or makes a wrong calculation, then you cannot use the GPS. And what makes your phone, which is the fruit of knowledge cumulative over hundreds of years, cost no more than $500? It's because generations of economists have constructed sophisticated models that have helped organize resources in the economy efficiently, allowing competition to thrive and providing opportunities for talented people to shine. Social scientists also constructed management models and methods that help business reduce cost. Thanks to such advances in social sciences, our society can produce a miraculous device like your smartphone at a very affordable cost. But why despite being so helpful to human society, science is being opposed by a wave of anti-intellectualism? One main reason is the fact that modern humans are being surrounded by advanced technologies since they are born, so they take them for granted. It's like people living in a first world country saying that they are having a hard life because the bus is often five minutes late. Similarly, a person who gets used to watching television, using a smartphone, having an air conditioner since an early age, does not find it very special. A baby can open a fridge to take out the milk to drink it without ever giving a thought about what makes the fridge cold. So science has made life easier for all of us. But ironically, an easy life makes us forget how wonderful science is. Another reason is the current state of education. It seems that the education system in many countries have failed to nurture the love for science among students. In many countries, a low quality education system coupled with the emphasis on scores and achievement make students neglect the meaning of science. Even worse, the media does not promote science education programs, which are less interesting and do not generate as much revenue as entertainment programs. The consequence is many people nowadays put a great deal of their trust in what their favorite celebrities say about science, rather than what actual scientists say about it. The problem is further complicated by the explosion of fake news that erodes public trust in scientists. You may say that science is not always right. There is wrong scientific research sometimes. That is correct. But you should understand that science is an ongoing process to find the truth and does not always get the right path. Scientists learn from mistakes to reach the right path. That is what makes science progress and become reliable by accepting to be wrong and continue searching for the truth. Science is different from religion in its teaching. Scientists do not claim to have found principles or rules in life and force others to strictly follow them. For example, a man cannot have sex with a man or a spouse cannot divorce. The purpose of science is to find out how nature works. For example, when collecting climate data, scientists see that the average temperature of the Earth has risen over the decades and they decide to investigate why. They want to know what has caused the Earth to become warmer, human activities or a natural cycle. If it is caused by human activities, then what are those activities? So scientists do not make a claim about the warming Earth and try to prove that it is the truth. They see from the data that the Earth is getting warmer and then they want to know why. And contrary to popular belief that scientists team up to form a conspiracy, scientists always try to prove that the others are wrong. You go to the media and see the headline, scientific theory proven wrong. Who proves it wrong? The other scientists. They are not a bunch of like-minded men, always patting each other's shoulders and showering the others with compliments. They love tearing down the hard work of others as much as possible. And when they cannot destroy a research report, they have to admit that the report is correct. There were a countless number of scientists trying to disprove the theory of evolution, but advances in genealogy made them see that the theory was correct. There have also been thousands of scientists trying to prove that Einstein was wrong. But the more they observe the universe, the more they test the theory in real life, 
the more they admit that Einstein was correct. The Big Bang Theory was mocked when it was first introduced to the scientific community. But now, after withstanding numerous challenges, it is regarded as the key to understand the birth of the universe. Having lived far too long in an artificial world built by science and the failure of an education system in teaching science has made many people lose appreciation of scientific advancement. The huge intellectual gap between scientists and the mass is causing a huge problem on the progress of our society. A notable incident is the withdrawal of the U.S. from the Paris Agreement with regard to the protection of the environment by U.S. President Donald Trump. Or in China, the government ignored the warning of environmental disasters from scientists to totally destroy an ecological system to build the Three Gorges Dam. In Brazil, the government still allows deforestation for the purpose of mining gold. The public in general is indifferent to these issues and the voice of scientists is left unheard. If this trend of ignorance continues, our society will be left unprepared for imminent catastrophic disasters. You may say that you do not trust science, but the moment you open your smartphone, you are signaling, I trust science.